respect the jury's verdict. They took a lot of time to uh, to come to the verdict. Um, we wish it would have been different, of course, but they um, they certainly uh, came to their decision. We respect that decision. We'll explore our options now post-trial and uh, go from there. How difficult of a case was this from a defense perspective, considering he admitted to having Molly tip his body in his trunk and the DNA was there? Very difficult, of course. I mean, anytime you have a, a client who gives a statement like he did, and um, the fact that there was uh, DNA evidence uh, in the trunk, and the fact that he led them to the body, I mean, it makes it extraordinarily difficult, absolutely. Considering the statewide attention to this, are, are you, I'm trying to think of how to put this, but are, are you convinced that it was ever possible to find a jury? Do, do you believe they were impartial here? In this case, we're very pleased that the jury took the time that they did to look at the evidence and to deliberate in this case. You know, it would be impossible to find a jury that hadn't heard about this case, and that wouldn't matter even if we had the ability to leave the state of Iowa, we would, which we don't, but we wouldn't be able to find someone, uh, a, a group of people that haven't heard from this case. Uh, we. We're really pleased with the time that has been spent with jury selection and uh, the time that was given to this case. So we, we're disappointed with the outcome, but that's, that's what it is. What are those potential options for you that you're mulling at this point? Well, we, of course, we'll look at post-trial motions. Um, you know, we'll go back and look at any evidentiary issues that were raised uh, during the trial. And, of course, uh, we had that issue on the motion to suppress that was litigated uh, prior to trial, and of course that'll be looked at uh, on appeal. It's no secret that we disagreed with Judge Yates's suppression ruling. Uh, we sought a discretionary review with the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court denied that uh, because we will file an appeal uh, on Mr. Bahena's behalf. Uh, the, the Supreme Court will have the opportunity to review those claims and to make a decision. Do you have an estimate on how long it will take to file that appeal? Well, the sentencing's on uh, July 15, so we have 30 days from that day. So you're looking at end of July, first part of August. Can you talk us through the decision to uh, have your client testify? Well, the decision to have him testify um, wasn't as difficult as a lot of people want to make it sound. I mean, we had a situation where a client gave a statement um, and he had her DNA in the trunk, and he led him to the body. That's all pretty incriminating evidence. Um, and from the very first day we met Mr. Behena, the story he uh, put forth on the stand uh, was exactly the version of the events he told us going back to August 2018. He had never varied from that version of the events, not one, not one detail. So um, we had to get something up there, and we thought the jury needed to hear directly from him, especially since they couldn't judge the credibility of him on the, on the video since it was in Spanish. And uh, we had real issues with that interview and how it was conducted. So it, it really wasn't that difficult of a decision for us. To clarify, did you say that uh, his the account that he gave on the stand is the account that, an account that he gave to you in 2018? Absolutely. He has never varied from that, not one detail. You know, I think there was speculation that we made some sort of, you know, uh, uh, you know, let's, let's figure out a, a story. And, uh, I mean, if we were going to make something up, we would have came up with <laughs> something better than that. <laughs> Do you worry that it didn't sound credible to the jury? You know, the, just the story of Molly Tibbetts' abduction was a bizarre story in and of itself. Um, so what we thought is that whoever told the tale, whatever tale it was, had to sound credible. And um, the version of the events given by Mr. Bahena uh, it had to sound credible coming out of his mouth, whatever it was. So we were more concerned about how he appeared to a jury and how he sounded to a jury. And um, we didn't spend a whole lot of time preparing him. We wanted him to seem authentic. 
uh, rather than coached. And uh, so we didn't spend, you know, an inordinate amount of time preparing him to testify. We uh, kind of just let him tell his story uh, in a very genuine fashion. So what you saw from him yesterday is really who he is. One thing that we can agree, and I think everybody can agree on, is that Ms. Tibbetts was someone that did not deserve to be a victim. And the, the fact that this woman went out for a run and ended up in this cornfield is just bizarre on its own. You know, she was not the type of person that would engage somebody in an argument. She's not the type of person that would be hurtful. Uh, I think that her choice, uh, even if, if she thought something bad, would be to be kind. And it doesn't, you know, I think any reason that someone would uh, abduct her and, and leave her dead in a cornfield is just a bizarre set of facts, no matter what. You, uh, you were throughout the case, or the, throughout the trial, to point fingers towards uh, Mr. Jack, boyfriend. Is that, in your mind, the, the most likely? <sighs> he certainly gave us reason to suspect. Okay, um, you know, there's there's a lot of people who, in this case whose stories didn't check out well enough for us, um, and and that was a problem for us. Uh, so, can we tell you who who did this? No, um, we can tell you that getting to know Christian Bahena, um, we are very surprised that he would be the kind of person that would commit a crime like this. He is um, nothing but a soft-spoken, respectful, kind person. And every person we have talked to in the last two and a half years who has had any interaction with this man echoes that. Um, he's been a, a delight to represent from a legal standpoint, from a lawyer's standpoint. has been absolutely no problem. And another thing I'd point out is his family has been just a delight to work with. Uh, I know that there has been some questions from some of you about whether or not his family or why they haven't been at trial. Uh, these people are, are hardworking people. Uh, and, and I will tell you that whenever we meet with the family, we normally have a uh, oh, seven or eight people in the room that care for him. And uh, these are all people that work hard and have been following this case very closely. Uh, the fact that you all have been able to provide this to the, the public uh, so easily has been beneficial uh, that this family, uh, they just don't have the resources to take off two weeks, uh, but they've been watching closely. Uh, we'll be in touch with them as soon as we leave the courthouse. And I, I, it, it has been a, a pleasure uh, to work with the Bahena family. Uh, I have no unkind things to say about any of them, uh, similar to what, how we feel about the Tibbetts family.